this culture is socialising our young girls to be ready for pornography, whether they ever end up on a porn site or not. And the reason for that is they are being taught to hypersexualize and pornify themselves. And really, when you think of all the thousands of images, they all come down to a young, white, blonde-toned female. Now, we do let some women of color in, if they look like Beyonce, or of course Rihanna. We have a concept called the reader inscribed in the text. Look at this woman. Look at her clothes, look at her face, look at her posture, and look at her gaze, G-A-Z-E. Who is she speaking to? Because the notion is that every image has a reader in man. Before you answer, do you think she's speaking to her mother, saying, let's go for a cup of coffee after the photo shoot? <laughs> so who's she talking to? Men. And what's she saying? Fuck me. Would you all agree? <laughs> so this is what I call the fuck me lock. Now I want you to think what it means to be male and grow up in a culture where before you can even speak, females are offering themselves to you. Come get me, come get me. Now what happens to young girls is when they are developing their sexual identity, what they learn is they have two choices, either fuckability or invisibility. And what do you want from a teenager when built into the DNA of adolescence is the need to be visible? What do you want from her when her friends are walking around with low slung jeans, a tramp stamp, with the midriff showing? What do you want her to do? Because it is impossible to ask her to go for invisibility. So this is not a choice. This is being forced into a type of sexuality that she didn't invent, that she didn't decide because there are so few choices. You know who really told me what it was? It was actually incarcerated child rapist. I like to call Dick. Now, Dick was in prison for raping his 12-year-old stepdaughter. And he was explaining to me how he groomed her. And then he looked me straight in the eye and he said, the culture did a lot of the grooming for me. The culture is mass perpetrating against our girls. Perp culture part two for the boys is the porn industry. There is an entire generation of young people who think sex ends with a money shot to the face. Now for the uninitiated out there, a money shot is ejaculation on the face. A student told me that she was talking to a boyfriend and he said to her he had a deal breaker that she had to let him come on her face. And she said, no, I'm not letting you do that. So get rid of the notion of Playboy, Penthouse, or even Hustler. Those were the good old days of pornography. What changed everything was the internet. The internet made pornography affordable, it made it accessible, and it made it anonymous. Do you know that porn sites get more visitors each month than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined? Just get your head around that. And that we know that from studies that nearly 90% of the top watched rented scenes have at least physical or verbal abuse against the woman. I'm gonna follow the breadcrumbs of a 12 year old. With no credit card, put porn into Google and I'm gonna tell you what he's gonna see. The first thing he's gonna see, the major act on virtually all websites is gagging. This is where the man puts the penis so far down her throat that she gags almost to the point of vomiting. They put a lot of mascara on her face so that she's actually tearing and you can see the rivulets of mascara running down. As she is choking, he grabs her head and he pulls her towards him and he says, look at me, and she is choking. This is a kind of sexual psychopath. And when you think that porn is the major form of sex ed, think what's gonna happen to the next generation of boys most of whom are brought up on hardcore mainstream internet porn. Now, the average 12-year-old, when he goes on to porn, when he puts porn into Google, what do you think he thinks he's going to see? Breasts? People having sex? Do you think he's thinking of gagging? Of course he's not. They're telling him, you want to be a male? This is your entree into masculinity. And in that boy's stomach, is a toxic stew. He feels enormous shame that he is aroused and nobody has said to him, this is not who you are because the pornographers say to him, 
this is who you are. This is what you want. Because we take your gorgeous young bitches and we do what every man would really like to do. But you know what? That's not true. And I know that's not true. And I know that's true because feminists are men's best friends. Because we believe more in men than the pornographers do. And you know how I know that the pornographers don't tell the truth about men? I know that as a feminist, I know that as a scholar, and above all, I know that as a mother of a son. My son is worth better than this. If my son is, then I believe your son is too. Let me read you the kind of promotional copy from the movie Anally Ripped Whores. We at Pure Filth know exactly what you want. Chicks being ass fucked till their sphincters are pink, puffy, and totally blown out. Adult diapers just might be in store for the whores when their work is done. And I want to make this clear. This is mainstream porn. This is what the 12-year-old boy gets to within 15 seconds. We know from 40 years of research that the younger the boys get to porn, the more it limits their capacity for intimacy, the more it decreases their empathy for rape victims, the more it increases depression and anxiety, and the more likely they are to engage in risky sexual behavior. Now we have a whole generation of boys desensitized because really what you want at 10 is different to what you want at 15, 20, 30. So where's this going? In 2002, the Free Speech Coalition, which is the lobbying arm of the porn industry, lobbied the Ashcroft Court to take away the argument that you couldn't use girls who looked under 18. And this is what we got overnight. Teen porn. First time with daddy. Daddy's whore. It's okay, she's my stepdaughter. What are we going to do? How are we going to tie this porn monster down step by step? We're going to use the Gulliver strategy. Education by education by education. We're going to use a public health approach. Just like we stop drinking and driving, you bring to the table all those who have a vested interest in the well-being of the next generation. And at my group, Culture Reframed, we are taking the public health model and we are going to build parents' programs, we are going to build programs for professionals, we are going to build programs for students, because we are going to tie this porn monster down piece by piece. And you know why? Because our children are worth more, our culture is worth more, our boys are worth more, and our girls are worth more. Thank you very much. <laughs>